welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We're at Gateway 2018. Next to me is AJ. AJ is the party game king at Strategicom. I forgot my crown. He left it at home. <laughs> but we recognize him. AJ runs a lot of party games at Strategicom. Uh, almost every time, right? You run like several? Yeah, I like to run big social deduction games and big group party games that you normally couldn't run at home because there are a lot of people at the convention. So. And a lot of people play that usually uh, at night, right? Yeah, yeah. As at the end of the convention, a lot of people are playing Werewolf, and then a lot of people are playing Two Rooms in a Boom and other large games like that. Okay, so um, I play Werewolf, but I haven't played Two Rooms in a Broom. I don't know how it, how it goes. Can you tell me a little bit about that game? So Two Rooms in a Boom is more like Resistance than Werewolf. So there are two teams. One team has a president and another team has a bomber, and the bomber is trying to blow up the president, and if the president is blown up, then the bomber's whole team wins, so there's two teams of players. And uh, if the president survives, then the president's team wins, and the players are playing in two separate rooms of the convention, at least here. You could do it at home just with two areas, but here we play with two separate rooms, and players are moved from room to room throughout the game, and then at the end, Wherever they are depends on whether the bomber is actually able to blow up the president. How many bombers are there? There's just one bomber on the red team, which is the bomber's team, and then one president on the blue team, the president's team. The rest of the players don't care about their own lives. They're just trying to save or kill the president in the game. Okay, are the teams on, in separate rooms? So they're mixed in with each other at the start of the game, uh, randomly, and then you're supposed to try to figure out wh who is who and who is which role in the game uh, so that at the end of the game you can have the president and the bomber in the same room if you're trying to do that or the president away from the bomber if you're trying to save him because there's two rooms so the bomber will only blow up one of the rooms not the other one. So nobody knows who the president or the bomber is? Not at the beginning of the game but throughout the game you can use your abilities and actions in the game to try to f to uh, look at other people's roll cards and uh, use that information to move people around. There's one of the people in the room is able to control who moves from room to room. So you have to befriend that person or make them not the leader of the room anymore so that they can send who you want to the other room. Yeah. Okay, so to summarize, if you're on the red team, you want the bomber and the president to be on the same room. If you are on the opposing side, you want the opposite. Yes, that's right. Okay, so give me a strategy tip how, on how to, come, how to play as the bomber, the red team. Okay, so uh, as the bomber, you, uh, in, both, in all cases, you want to conceal your role as long as possible from the other team. But it's very important for your team to know you're the bomber as soon as possible. So you have to share your information with a small number of people at the very beginning of the game and then not anyone else. That's what I would do if I was the bomber. So I'd try to find someone on my team. Who's, who's on my team, I'd tell them I'm the bomber and probably prove that. I'd show them my card, and then I wouldn't show very many people after that. And that person would be my, uh, the person who told people I was the bomber. So I would never actually show I was the bomber to anyone, but that person would tell people I'm the bomber so that they would know, whoever needed to know. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. So you have somebody else do the bidding for you, uh, like in the long game. But in the beginning, you tell a few people that you trust. Yes. It's... Well, one of the things is you'll see a group forming in your room of people who are on the same team. They'll naturally congregate together, and so you'll know that's the opposite team from you because they didn't invite you in. Uh, or, and then the leader of that group is usually the bomber. So if you can avoid being the person who is dictating all this information, if someone else, that, one, that person will look like they're the bomber because they'll be in charge. And so... Uh, it'll make it seem that way. This actually applies to the other team as well. The president's role is just to avoid the bomber, but it's the same information. The other team's trying to find out who that is so that they can get them matched up with the bomber. So if you're the president, you want to avoid letting too many people know that information as well. So you want to be as uh, you know, secretive as possible about your role and uh, you know, who is really in charge. Okay, so if you're not the bomber and you're not the president, but you find out who is, then maybe it's to play the mind game, you pretend you are and kind of act like you're the leader to try to psych out the opponent because the opposing, 
opposing thing is going to think, oh, he looks like he's calling the shot. So maybe he's the bomber or the president, right? Would that be a good, valid strategy? Yeah. In fact, uh, a lot of new players are playing in the game all the time, and they don't really know the better strategies. And one of those is, so there are other roles in the game that players will have, and some people will not be allowed to share information, like, as their role. Uh, and there are a lot of wacky roles in the game to make it fun. Like some people can't, like there's a role where you can't talk and silly things like that. But a lot of the basic roles are you can force people to share or you're not allowed to share. Uh, and the reason why the not allowed to share roles are in the game is so that other players can act like they're that role. So if you're the president or the bomber and someone wants you to share your role with them, you can say, well, I can't. I can't share my role because I'm the shy guy who's not allowed to share. So uh, then, then that's different than you saying, oh, I don't want to share with you, which is suspicious. So you can just say, oh, I'm not allowed to share. And then that's why you, you're keeping your role secret. And then you can use that with a couple of people who refuse to share, the shy person and the president, right? And then the team doesn't know which is which. So that gives you a great advantage because they'll think perhaps your shy guy character, your role player, uh, is the president instead of your actual president, right? Okay, sounds interesting. I, I think I might prefer this one over wearable because you don't get killed right away, but you have to stick with the whole game. Right. And usually how long it takes? So a game is usually about a half hour, and so the rounds of the game are like five minutes, and then people will move from room to room every five minutes or so. And so it's, it's about a half hour, so it's a quick game, and everyone stays in all the way through um, until the bomb explodes. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So it's a lot of fun. Like I said, it's a little different than Werewolf, so if you don't like Werewolf, you can try Two Rooms in a Boom. It's a different kind of game. Uh, but I enjoy it, and I love running at the con. Uh, last night we had 40 people playing in one game. Oh, wait, by the way, I heard that you have a mod for this game, right? Yeah, so one of the things I love to do at the con is uh, run two rooms in a boom, but modify it a little bit, uh, especially since we get such large numbers of players. So y last night uh, we ran three rooms in a boom <laughs> where uh, we, we had three separate rooms in the game uh, with three separate teams that each had a president and a bomber on the same team and your goal was to simply have your president survive. So since there were three bombers, you were trying to make sure your one president was not in the room with any of those three people. So you had to do a lot of talking to the other teams, and since there's three teams, you could form a, maybe a, a negotiation for your two, two teams to work together to keep their presidents alive and then kill the other president with their bombers or something like that. It was very cool. Oh, man, you must be good at politic games, like, you know, those Twilight Imperium, those kind of games, because you seem to mind games. It's all about mind games with AJ. Yeah, I do like politic negotiation games. <laughs> I like Twilight Imperium, uh, Nothing Personal, um, yeah, games like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, got to watch out for AJ if you play social deduction games with them. Secret Hitler, Hitler right here, getting all the other fascists to do his bidding, right? Yep, yep, it's a great game too. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, AJ, for showing us how to wing at two rooms in a boom and maybe even three rooms in a boom. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.